Instead of handling business, you were showing off again. That's how she got hurt. You're as much to blame as Puff. I know. Exactly 22 years and four months from the time of me writing this video, the series responsible for getting me into comics was aired on WB Kids. A thrilling, well-written, and no pun intended, shockingly deep series that followed the life of a young high school kid by the name of Virgil Hawkins, also known as Static or more incorrectly referred to as Static Shock. The Static Shock series was based off of the Static comics written by Dwayne McDuffie and Robert L. Washington III, written by the small comic book house known as Milestone Comics but distributed by DC. Man, it'd be an understatement to say that this series was everything to me as a kid. At the time, I didn't even know that it mattered, but it really felt good to see a character that looked like me and sounded like me that wasn't a stereotype. See, outside of a few exceptions, most young black males on TV fit into a couple of different boxes. One being the thug with a heart of gold who deep down is a really good kid, but he just lacks a little bit of guidance, usually due to the father abandoning the family. How come he don't want me, man? or you have the over-exaggerated nerd type. And on both of those tropes, there were a few different spectrums. Looking further on the thug with a heart of gold trope, on the light end, think of a character like Will from The Fresh Prince. A good kid that got into a little bit of trouble, and my mom got scared. but has a talent like being a basketball player, so he never really crosses any major lines. And then on the extreme other end of that spectrum, you have a character like Jody from the movie Baby Boy. Grew up in a similar situation, but went down a much deeper and darker path. He doesn't have any sports talents and he's not books smart so he feels trapped into doing things that he really doesn't want to in order to survive. And taking a look into the exaggerated nerd trope, that's no different. There's the Carlton Banks type character, who grows up rich or at least upper middle class, speaks proper, and has little to no interaction with black people outside of the extremely sheltered family dynamic that he was raised in. And then you have your Steve Urkel type characters, and really that's pretty self-explanatory. All of those tropes can be used to tell really good stories, and to be honest, they have. I've enjoyed a lot of stories with all of those different types of characters that I mentioned. But the problem is just that. They felt like characters. See, that's why Static Shock was such a breath of fresh air, because Virgil didn't feel like that to me. He felt like a real person, and not just a real person, he felt familiar. Virgil was super cultured and into hip hop, but he also loved comic books and him and his friend designed video games. He was far from monolithic, he was just a really all around well rounded character. And on top of that, he fought against issues that I only wish a superhero was in my neighborhood to fight against. But he didn't just fight against crime, he understood that people didn't just fit into boxes of criminal or good person. And just to add a little icing on the cake, there was always an occasional team up with Batman and Robin from the animated series. See, way back in the ancient year of 2000, this show came out before the MCU made it cool for everyone in the world to be a fan of comic book media. This type of stuff was really something that was pretty exclusive to nerd culture. You know, the outcasts, the misfits, the people who more times than not didn't fit into that conventional ideal of what cool or popular was. And let's be real guys, this type of media for the longest time, up until pretty recently, was referred to as white boy shit, white boy shit. But regardless of all that, man, before buzzwords like representation and inclusivity became so ingrained in pop culture, I had static shock. Something that made me feel like I wasn't on the outside looking in anymore. I no longer felt like the annoying little brother trying to hang out where I wasn't wanted. I felt like I belonged. Yes! Tell me that doesn't give chest pain a new meaning. So the first episode pops off with our character Static being bullied. He seems to have gotten in a little bit over his head and he's being forced and coerced into going down to the docks to participate in a gang war. Pretty dark for a kid's show, I know, but this series is way tame compared to the comic book. But the outcome was fairly the same. On the docks there was a mutagen that when activated could change the DNA makeup of anyone who came in contact with this gas. Everyone affected by this event in the Big Bang is referred to as a bang baby which is very clearly derived from a term back in the 80s and early 90s as crack babies. I wasn't alive when the comics were created, but I'm sure it was a commentary on the usage of terms like that. So obviously you know what happens next, Static gets powers. 
but he wasn't the only one at the dock. So not only did he get powers, but everyone there did as well. I do like that everybody that gets affected is not automatically thrown into one box. Some people become heroes, some people become villains, some people fall in that anti-hero category, and others just have these powers, but they really don't want to be either. They just really want to be normal. Let's get into why this series has stuck with so many people throughout the years. And that 100% has to be the subject matter. When it comes to juggling tones and subject matter in kids TV, the pinnacle for me will always be Batman the Animated Series and Gargoyles as an honorable mention. With that being said, there were a lot of episodes in Batman the Animated Series that I was extremely surprised looking back that were actually cleared. Although they were kids TV shows, you can definitely tell a lot of it was written with adults in mind. Static Shock was a bit different. Although the subject matter it touches is pretty heavy at times, it was definitely more geared towards kids than a show like Batman the Animated Series. If anything, this show made the Spider-Man influence on the character pretty apparent. He says a lot of quippy one-liners and cracks jokes a lot of the times, even in situations where he probably shouldn't. So holding hands and singing Kumbaya is out, huh? And his first love interest in season one is a redhead who was a school journalist, pretty similar to MJ in the Ultimate Comics. Static is definitely his own unique character, but as a Spidey fan, it's just something that I noticed on this rewatch. A lot of episodes in season one and two kind of played out like after school specials. And as the series went on in three and four, they kind of toned that down and it became more cohesive. But even in season one and two, how they pushed the line on some of these episodes is pretty impressive. See, Virgil and Richie are best friends in this show. Other than the couple of times that they don't see eye to eye, you rarely see these two apart. But every time they hang out, they're always at Static's house, and it's not really made clear why. Richie's extremely reluctant to invite Virgil over, and when he finally walks in the door of Richie's house, you can pretty much see why. Hey, Mr. Foley, good to finally meet you. Hey, Dad, this is my friend Virgil. Remember, I told you about him. Not nearly enough. Yeah, Richie's dad is racist. And there is a lot of nuance in this episode. Even though Richie and Virgil are best friends, Virgil lives in an all black neighborhood. At this point in his life, it's heavily implied that he's never really experienced racism. So when Richie's dad is being really smug and making these remarks at the dinner table, it doesn't even register to Virgil that he's being racist. I'm so embarrassed. Will you stop? My pops hates hip hop too. It's not a black white thing, it's an old thing. As far as I'm concerned, this whole thing is squashed. When the camera pans over to his mom, you can clearly see they know that this is a habit with him. And on top of that, when they're at the dinner table, it is completely silent. There's no music. It's just the dialogue. This episode perfectly showed a family dynamic that is a lot more common than people realize. I found myself in pretty similar situations as a kid, having to get that preliminary talk beforehand about how someone's dad or granddad is a little quote unquote behind the times. It takes Virgil walking by and hearing Richie's dad say some extremely unsavory things for it even to sink in. And now I see why Richie acts like a hood, Maggie. That kid's a bad influence. All his kind are. Keep your voice down. It's bad enough I gotta deal with them all day long. Now one of them's in my house. And disturbed by what he just witnessed, Richie runs away. And that forces his dad to reluctantly work with Virgil's dad to find him. And Virgil's dad, being the badass he is, drops some crazy knowledge on him. And even though he was proven wrong about his beliefs, the end of the episode didn't just wrap up with him completely changing his mind. And I thought that was a very deep and realistic touch. People with that type of mindset and ideology don't just change overnight. Although the episode of Jimmy was very after school special like on the surface, it doesn't change the fact that it was one of the most shocking and jarring moments that I can remember ever seeing on kids TV. So the character of Jimmy is one of the many background kids at Virgil's high school. It's been implied that pretty much his entire stint of schooling, he's had to deal with bullying. But one day some bullies took things a little bit too far and Jimmy had had enough. They embarrassed him in front of the entire student body, they didn't just hurt him emotionally but but they hurt him physically as well. Jimmy would wake up every day and pretend to go to school and go through the motions so his parents wouldn't suspect anything. They had no idea what had happened to him at school and they had no idea that he'd actually been skipping for the next two weeks. Which is just another one of those subtle real life touches because a lot of the times when these kids go through these types of things in real life, 
they don't feel like they can open up to their parents about it. They only figure out that he hasn't been going to school because Virgil and his dad stop by their house to tell them just that. And when doing so, Static goes up to his room and checks his computer, where he finds a note basically describing in detail what he plans to do to get back at these bullies who hurt him. All I wanted was to be left alone. And they wouldn't even do that. They had to hurt me, humiliate me. Well, it ends tonight. I'm putting a stop to them once and for all. <gasps> Jimmy found his dad's gun and took it to school to confront these bullies in an extremely tense and heartbreaking standoff. Richie actually becomes the MVP of this episode and he talks him down. Jimmy, you're right. I I'm sorry, man. No, you're not. Jimmy, don't. He's not worth it. She's right, man. You're all upset about this now, but next week, it won't even matter. But the bullies being as dumb as they are, as soon as he puts the gun down, they decide to charge him. And in doing so, of course, the gun goes off. And it's one of the most heartbreaking moments of the show. Usually in a situation like this, it's just a scare and everyone's okay. Or maybe a side character that we don't know anything about gets hit with a bullet. But with this, none other than Richie himself was the victim of this bullet wound. I don't know what type of kids TV you guys used to watch, but I can't ever remember a kids TV show who actually showed a kid get shot. You can look at this episode as just propaganda about gun control, or you can look at it as an after school special about bullying, but there's even more layers of nuance than that. The message that I personally took from it was sometimes doing the right thing is painful. Richie did nothing wrong. He didn't have to get involved at all. But Richie steps in to help and in doing so, he is the one who gets hurt the most. Really powerful episode that I am extremely surprised actually made air. But man, enough of all that. I don't only like Static because it's all doom and gloom. At the end of the day, this show is extremely fun and I'm gonna get into some of the reasons why that is after this extremely shameless plug. This video was actually suggested by one of my Patreons. So if you want the power of suggesting and also want to support an up and coming YouTuber myself, in the meantime, there is my Patreon in the banner as well as the actual clickable link will be in the description. And if you subscribe to the largest tier, after just three months, you will get one of these t-shirts in the mail. The web represents my boy Spider-Man, my second favorite fictional character, and my own personalized Bat logo represents my favorite all-time fictional character of Batman with nerdy before it was cool in the center and if you don't want to support a patreon monthly that's fine you can also go to my youtube channel click the store tab and purchase one of these bad boys as well as mugs and other designs but anyways back to the video watching this series back was extremely fun because literally with every season the show got better and better like i said seasons one and two were very after school special like but when season three hit it started to blend that procedural villain of the week television with story arcs that spanned it over multiple episodes after the great reception of the crossover in season two with, with batman and robin they pretty much made that a staple for season two three and four to start off the season season with that crossover, whether it be with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, Batman and Robin, or the Justice League as a whole. Static even goes to Africa, where they meet this super dope hero by the name of Anansi the Spider, who's like this African crime fighter. They really started to expand the lore of Static's heroes as well as his rogues gallery, and that was really dope to see. The writing and stories got better, but so did the animation. The colors started to pop a little bit more. The animation became a lot more fluid and not so stiff. And we can't forget the dope intro song upgrade by Lil Romeo. And speaking of Lil Romeo, there was also cameos from Lil Romeo in season three. We got cameos from Shaq and other people as well. Admittedly, a lot of those episodes kind of played out like an episode of Scooby-Doo rather than a superhero show, but it was extremely fun to see people like Shaq or Lil Romeo just for nostalgia purposes. And season four is super special to me because it brought two of my favorite episodes, one being Fallen Hero, where it pops off with Jon Stewart Green Lantern causing all kind of destruction, committing robberies, and acting completely out of character, and the entire world has turned on 
this fallen Justice League member. We come to find out it was Sinestro the entire time. And my all time favorite episode of the series and of season four has to be the crossover for Batman Beyond. When helping Batman with this time machine, Virgil gets a little bit too cocky and overloads the system, which sends him about 40 or 50 years into the future where he meets Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, and eventually an old and decrepit Bruce Wayne. I really like the setup of this episode because Bruce really needs Virgil's help into saving this hero who's widely referred to as one of the world's greatest heroes and we find out that this world's greatest hero is an adult static. It was really cool because it showed us a peek into something that could have been a possible future for the series. It's honestly a shame that this series ended at season four because it seemed to just really be hitting its stride. And honestly, I could sit up here all day and gush over this show, but I would like to know down in the comments, what are some of your favorite episodes of Static Shock? What's your favorite season, your favorite cameo? Whatever you remember from this series, let me know down in the comments.